page 18, Soft, Soft, Music is Stealing. It's a beautiful melody. And it's got some interesting things going on in it. A little more challenging for us. At the top, they're introducing some expression marks or some dynamic marks. Now, dynamics, that's one of the things I do when I'm learning a new piece of music. It's one of the steps I go through. So I'll talk about the dynamics or the expression marks when I get to it. So let's go through the routine first in learning this. I see it's one page long, treble and bass cliff, three four time signature. It's in the key of C major. You don't know that yet because they haven't taught key signatures yet, but take my word for it. It's in C major. You need to be doing my C major scale one octave up and down. I got that links in the description. You just, okay, you got it. Three four time signature, so three counts in a major and we're counting quarter notes. Right hand first. Let's get each hand worked out first to make sure we understand what each hand is doing. Starting third finger here, and then put your hand here. Now we are going to move around a little bit. So for the most part, we don't need any other finger numbers for the first line. The second line, we do need to move around a little bit in the right hand. Now, we'll go ahead and do what the book is suggesting, but I want to give you some alternatives. I usually give alternative fingerings anyway, because there's usually more than one way to finger things, and I don't always agree with the fingering. There are different fingering styles, and I teach the one that I use. It's the one I learned in college. It works well, so I use it. But we're starting out here. And so it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two. Second, they want thumb on that, the D, because your second finger's on it. Well, I'm going to suggest you play the first D with second finger, because that's where your hand is. And because we have more than one D in a row, they're called repeated notes. When you play a note more than once, it's a repeated note. And we use repeated notes to change hand positions. So I'm going to play the first D in the second line with second finger, and then I'm going to use his thumb for the second one. Because I have to lift up on a repeated note anyway, to point it. Well, when I lift up, I can change hand positions. That happens with the rub. So I'm just going to lift up. I'm just going to come up one. For the second D, I'm going to use thumb. Now I'm in this position. Now I can stay in this position now for the rest of the piece. Because I don't have any more C's in the right hand. Which means I don't need any of these other finger numbers. You know, read the notes, not finger numbers. So the second line, I'm here, and then I hear. Let's go down to the fourth line. Here, your it's quarter notes. A. And that's tied, so you're going to hold that down for five counts, and then one beat rest. And there's a one last line. One, two, three, one. You get, you get okay, you do the hand. Left hand, you're starting. They went five and two. That puts you in this position. I don't know that you really need that position because you're not doing a D in the in the. You're not playing that note in the left hand anywhere. In my opinion, you could just as easily be here and use a four thumb because this is really where you're at. However. As I said, there are different ways of fingering things. We'll just do what they're saying here. We'll be here. That puts in the middle, and when you first start, that means your hands are overlapping. Well, won't that be fun? <laughs> but it happens, so we'll deal with it. So left hand again. One, two, three, one, two, three. Isn't this fun? One, two. Just make sure you play in the rest. You play a rest by being quiet. Once you have the left hand worked out, and then we try and put the hands together. And again, when I first put the hands together, I'm liable to hesitate all over. I don't care. I'm just trying to figure out which fingers are working together. So here, we're here, and here, we're on top of each other. But you come out here a little bit. you got a little more room, because you can move around a little bit without moving around. That made no sense, but that's me. You know, I do that. So it's one. I'm going to hold that down for three counts. One, two. notes and then these notes and then here and then these notes so they're different fingers working at the same time and this takes time to work out second line I'm here now thumb here, here, here these fingers then these fingers 
and here. Finally, the index fingers are together. So you go through the whole piece very carefully and you work out which fingers are working together. And then you go back through it a few hundred times or whatever it takes and gradually work out the hesitations. So keep it slow is fine, but no hesitations. It has to be a steady beat throughout. You don't want to keep the hesitations. That is a huge mistake. I, people I, in our piano club, people perform sometimes and they hesitate sometimes. And I know that's exactly the way they play it. Every time they practice it, they hesitate there because they've, they haven't worked out the hesitation, which means you end up practicing the hesitation, which means it becomes part of your plan because you're going to play it as you practice it. So you can hesitate at first when you're just trying to work it out, but you've got to go back through and get rid of the hesitations. And that's a trick too, because sometimes even after you've worked them out, some of them will come back. That's okay. You just work them out again. That's part of playing the piano. You just keep working at things and they'll come back. You work them out again. Kind of like trying to herd cats sometimes. You're trying to get them in order and they got a mind of their own. Well, good luck. Here, it's similar in piano playing for a lot of people. It is for me at least. So we've got the hands together and now you work out the hesitations. It could be a month later. I don't care. I'm in no hurry. And now we think about the articulation. Articulation is the slurs. Well, I'm pretty much connecting everything anyway. You can't connect your repeated notes. You got to, uh, but I'm trying to get it as connected as I can. Like so, and you got the two note slurs in the left hand. One, two, three, one, two. Well, on a two note slur. You generally go down with the first note and then up with the second. Is it down, up? Let the wrist collapse just a little bit. Don't play with stiff wrists. Just don't. Let the wrist collapse a little bit on these. So it's down, up. Even though the right hand isn't doing it here. Down, up, down. So again, we're doing different things in the hands. It takes time. Be patient. It'll come if you'll stick with it. Now I want to introduce one more thing in articulation for you, as if you don't have enough, right? Okay. And that's the thing called a phrase. They'll get to it, round to it later, but I think it's important you understand what it is. A phrase is a musical sentence. It's a musical thought. See, we talk in sentences. Some sentences are really long and you get tired of hearing them because blah, blah, blah. Other sentences are really short, like super short. Well, same thing in music. So what we typically do is we'll lift up at the end of a, end of a sentence, or end of a phrase. It's like taking a breath. So there's a little bit of silence. Now, some music, they'll put in the phrasing for you and tell you where the phrases are. In other music like this, they don't. They give you slurs. That's not the same as a phrase. Slur just says, connect those notes. That's all that says. Well, a phrase, you may or may not connect the notes, but you will lift up after the phrase. And you can follow the words, a lot of this you can, but if you just listen to it, you can hear the phrases. I have to play the melody kind of quick in order for me to hear them. So if I just go here, so to me that was a phrase. The first two lines were a phrase, one musical thought. And then the next one, and there is another musical thought. Well, here I got to lift up because I got a, a one beat rest. So that's built in. And then the last line, you can, if you want, you can play all of that as one phrase, or you could divide it up and play each four measures as a phrase in the last line. So if I do that, It's like taking a breath. I'm just cutting that note a little bit short so I can lift up. So, and that's what we do between phrases. It just helps to make it a little more musical. So when I do the articulation, if I can figure out the phrasing, I add that too. So here, I'm going to connect the right hand all the way through. I'm going to lift up. 
lift up both hands here. So, and the left hand is the two note slurs. Remember those? Put in the phrasing and the snare, the articulation. There's other markings for articulation we'll learn later. Let's see if we can get this for now. And the left hand, it's not always marked. Look at the last line. The last few measures, you have these? There's no slurs or nothing. Well, in most cases when there's nothing like that, you'll slurp. You just slurp. You don't have to, there's nothing marked. You're doing, I could separate them. Depends on the music and what, how I feel, how I want to interpret it. But for the default, for the first thing you do, connect them. So go ahead and connect those even though there's no slur over. Once I have the articulation under control, then I add the dynamics. They call them expression marks. To me, an expression mark is articulation. So I, I call them dynamics. They're louds and softs. And there's a bunch of different things for louds and softs. The two we're going to use, and they're used probably the most, is the P for piano. That's an Italian word for piano, and it means soft. The F is an Italian word for forte, and it means loud. Piano forte, yeah, loud, soft, okay. So it's simply telling you play softly or play loud. Now well, that's a problem, because there's no set value for loud or soft or whatever. It depends on your situation. In a little room like this, I'm going to be softer than I would be if I were in a big room or outside. So it just, you have to adjust it for the situation you're in. It's just for you at this time on this piano, in this room, or whatever, what is loud and soft. You'll have to decide. I can't tell that for you. However, at the beginning, you see the P in between the staves. It should really be between the staves directly. They've got it close to the upper staff. I would prefer to see it. In, between the staves. And it simply means you play the melody softly, P for soft. The dynamic applies to the melody. The melody is what we're here for. The melody rules. The melody is what it's all about. We want to hear the melody. Everything else is back up. So the dynamic applies to the melody, in this case soft. What do you think soft is? Don't go super soft. There's softer than this, just soft. Now the left hand, that means it's got to be very soft in the background. I want to hear the melody. I'm not going to play the melody louder in order to make it louder than the left hand. No. I'm going to play the melody where I want it. And i got to learn to make the left hand softer than that. And this is something you can do when you're working on the scales. Play the scale. I, I got accents and things. Well, you can also play the scale. Learn to play them very softly. How softly can you play it? And don't use the soft pedal. That's cheating. We've got to learn to do this with the fingers and the hands. Uh, just very little weight. Very little weight. I play with weight. I need to talk about that more as we go through this. I let the weight push the notes down. I don't hold the hand still and try and use the fingers. It doesn't work very well and you'll cause problems later on. But no. So let the weight push it down. Let the wrist claps a little bit. But it's very little weight. But here I want a little more weight in the, in the right hand because it's a little louder than in the left hand because it's softer. Now when I get to the third line I get the F. That means loud and for the melody. Whatever you think loud is. The left hand can come up a little bit, be a little louder, but it's still got to be in the background. staying loud for the rest of the piece. And that's the dynamics for this. Then I add the speed. Moderato's in the middle, but again, it's not the beat we're talking about. It's the overall feel of it. So you have the dotted half notes, you're going to want to speed it up a little bit. But the quarter notes are going to want to slow it down a little bit. You've got to find somewhere in the middle that fits, because it's all going to be one speed. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one. To me, that's fine. One, two, three. I may be feeling a little fast, but still, if I go too much slower than that, then the dotted half notes just drag. So that's about the speed I think I would take it.
copy me. You read the music, you get into it, and you feel it. And you have words here. If you want to sing it, you go right ahead. The key word there is you. I don't sing in these videos. Good Lord, they're torture enough without that. But if you want to sing it, go ahead. I recommend you do the singing last. Learn it, learn it pretty well first. And then if you want to sing it, because they're saying in the soft part, you sing the word soft. So, so. And then when you get to the loud part, you do the loud. Loud, loud. Okay. I'll leave the singing up to you. Let's play this together very slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. Now, when I do this play with me section, I don't do dynamics. I don't do the lines. We're not performing it. We're just checking notes and rhythms. So I'm going to play both hands about the same because I need you to hear both hands. If you have to, you just do one hand at a time. But eventually, you want to get to where you can do both hands with me. Stay with me. you got all the right notes, no hesitations. Everything's fine. And then you can speed it up on your own later on. So I'll give us three counts. One, ready, go. Two, three, tie, two, 